there are 13,000 cabs on the streets of New York, but there's only one that pays you back for five years of fantastic frugality. Climb into TSR's very own Tiny Cash Cab, and I'll take you to a series of destinations that celebrate the Empire State without leaving home. So what do you say? You in? Welcome! Take a ride inside the Thrift Store Rundown's Cash Cab of Dreams, where we're celebrating our fifth anniversary by bringing the Big Apple home on a budget. Today, history comes alive with a little walk from the imagination. Now, I know of a certain film series that was inspired by this museum that's done most of the imagination for us, but still, it's kind of fun to do some of the imagining yourself. And I got just a ticket with your ticket to history right here. The American Museum of Natural History's Ultimate Guide, which I picked up for 25% off the price of $2.99. It is a Scribner publication. Let's check out some exhibits and see if you can figure out a common denominator with all of them. First up, we have the whole of primates. More than 300 primate species, including humans, monkeys, lemurs, and apes, are alive today and all evolved from a common ancestor over the last 60 to 80 million years. You'll learn all about, all about that in this exhibit. Like here, this couple of monkeys. <laughs> stupid monkey. Well, the fact is from birth, we might all feel like stupid monkeys. But hey, there's also some honor in that. Here we have the David H. Koch's Dinosaur Rain Hall of, uh, help me out on this one, um, Sorry Cien Dinosaurs? Sorry Cien Dinosaurs. I think I got that fairly close. The fourth floor elevator button is always lit, because that's where the dinosaurs are. The museum's biggest attraction and just a tiny fraction of the largest collection of dinosaurs in the world. Hey, you know if a fourth floor elevator button or any elevator floor button is always lit that you know that once those doors pry open that museum exhibit is going to be definitely lit. Next up we're in the Anne and Bernard Spitzer Hall of Human Origins. A Neanderthal skull cap discovered in 1856 was the first accepted proof that other kinds of humans once walked the earth. You'll get all that extraterrestrial and otherworldly info, and of course, lots of fun exhibits for young and old in this hall right here, Human Origins. And you can see a couple of kids enjoying themselves in the Museum of Natural History. Who said history was boring? Who said museums are boring? Hmm. Have you figured out the common denominator yet? No? Okay, a couple of more exhibits. The Margaret Mead Hall of Pacific Peoples. In 1928, anthropologist Margaret Mead published Coming of Age in Samoa, the bestseller that introduced countless readers to the value of looking carefully and open-mindedly at other cultures. Finally, the Frederick Phineas and Sandra Priest Rose Center for Earth and Space, opened to the public in February 2000, the World Center for Earth and Space is one of the most ambitious projects, sorry for the uh, tripod here, in the history of the museum. You should also know that this is home to the Theodore Roosevelt Memorial Hall and the original Hayden Planetarium. Two of the most famous artifacts in all of New York learning. Now, have you figured out the common denominator with all the exhibits I highlighted here? Oh, and by the way, this book begins and ends with a timeline of events in the development of the American Museum of Natural History. Well, here's the common thread. The one thing that ties all the exhibits I highlighted here together. They all served as inspirations for the Night at the Museum film franchise from 20th Century Fox, which really did make history come alive. 
in one of the most bizarre, humorous, and awesome ways anyone could ever imagine. This book is jam-packed with awesome information and, of course, plenty of equally tremendous photography of the museum, historical artifacts, historical photographs and drawings, and so on. It really is a near-ultimate guide to the American Museum of Natural History in New York, one of the world's preeminent scientific, educational, and cultural institutions since its inception in 1869. And I award it all five claps. It really has on the name Ultimate Guide. For those who can't make it to the American Museum of Natural History, like myself, this is the next best thing. But now that the museum has once again reopened, albeit with a lot of social distancing protocols, and of course, mask wearing, maybe perhaps now is a good time to revisit the museum and actually take this guide with you if you already bought it. Now, I don't know if they sell this guide at the museum, I picked it up at the thrift shop, but if they do, and I assume they do, walking around the museum and actually reading this guide while looking at all the exhibits and listening to all the info, that's a lot for your brain to take in. But after your visit, I think you'll say the same thing I'm about to say now to wrap this up. Be stiller, my heart. Remember. If you can make it here on a budget, you can make it anywhere without being chased out by live dinosaurs, or even worse, madcap ex-presidents. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the flip side.